Hi, Gary Stearman. Time for another daily update from Prophecy in the News. And as promised, Doug Hamp, author, lecturer, uh, producer of DVDs and reading materials, is with us once again. Hi, Doug. Hello. Thanks for having me. You know, yesterday, uh, as we ran out of time, we were talking about your DVD, The Fall Feasts of Israel and the Budding of the Fig Tree, and we had gotten into a topic that a lot of people have touched on, but I think you've sort of uh, expanded it and made it more understandable, and that is the fact that the lifetime of modern Israel from 1948 to the present and on into the immediate future uh, is something like the lifetime of a human being as given in the Bible. Right, because Jesus says that the generation will not pass away there in, in the, the, the parable of the fig tree in Matthew 24. So we have to say, what is a generation? And a lot of people were, were, were thinking maybe a generation was 40 years. And I can yeah. understand, you know, if you're living in the 80s, you want Jesus to come back in the 80s. I mean, it makes sure. perfect sense. But the reality is that the Bible never said that a generation was 40 years. It was actually taken erroneously from Numbers 32, where it says that all the men of the generation that, um, that, that heard the 12 spies come back and said, we're not interested, he says that they will wander the wilderness for 40 years. But the part that people have missed is that it says all those who are 20 and above will wander for 40 years. So the time of a generation, the minimum time of a generation is 60 years. And the ideals given to us in Psalm, or Psalm 90 verse 10, which says that the days of our lives are 70 years or if by reason of strength, 80. Mm -hmm. So that is really the ideal for a lifetime uh, as we see in the Bible. And that will tell us how long we have basically from 1948 until the second coming. And that does make it interesting because w we see a quickening of events in the Middle East right now. I think most people have the sense that something is about to happen. Uh, I personally have said that I think it's only the hand of God that's keeping things from collapsing over there right now because of all the drama in yeah. the Middle East. I, I think we're seeing a, a, uh, a convergence of events uh, and prophetic events. I mean, we, we, you know, we see the the solar flares that are supposed to happen yeah. between this year and next year, maybe 2014. We see something very interesting that was discovered by Mark Biltz, mm -hmm. that there will be four, a series of four solar, e uh, excuse me, lunar eclipses between 2014 and 2015 that fall on biblical feast days. Y and you have this on your DVD, by the way, and it's, it's very interesting. Uh, yeah, Mark Biltz really found something fascinating, but, but I believe it's in pa on Passover and Sukkot Yes. In 2014, 2015, yes. that there will be total eclipses. Now, right. this is not an event that happens every day, is it? Not at all. In <laughs> fact, uh, what he discovered, and I, you know, I went back and double checked him because I don't yeah. want to, you know, put my reputation on the line for bad information. I went back to the NASA website and I, I went and looked at what he said, and what I found on NASA is that sure enough, there were four lunar eclipses back in 1492. Mm -hmm when Columbus sailed the ocean blue yeah. and the Jews got kicked out of Spain and Portugal. Right. All right. So that was the major event that happened in the lifetime of, of the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. Then you have it happening again between 1949 and 1950, which is just on the heels of the War of Independence. You then have it again in 1967, very close to the Six Day War. So each one of these is a pretty big milestone in the life of the Jewish people. So therefore, when we think about 2014 and 2015, again, it's very suggestive. You know, none of us knows all, oh we don't yeah. know anything, you know, we can't read the future. We can just see what we, we see in the Bible. But it's very suggestive that between 2014 and 2015, or, you know, slightly after that, that something major is going to happen. Could it be the time of the beginning of Jacob's trouble, which is going to last three and a half years. That's the, the latter half of the tribulation. Well, that falls right into the timeline. If Israel was born May 15, or 14th, 1948, you count forward 70 years. Where do you come? Uh, what year do you arrive at? You have 2018 to 2028. We would then back up seven years, as we understand from Daniel chapter 9, mm -hmm. that there will be a seven-year covenant. So the beginning of that seven-year covenant would appear to be between 2011 and 2021, which means we're in, the window we're in the window already. So then you couple that window, 2011 to 2021, 
with what Mark Biltz has discovered, with the solar flares that are supposed to be cataclysmic, mm -hmm. with the imminent collapse of the U.S. dollar, uh, with the imminent uh, onslaught of World War III, also known as the War of Gog and Magog, found in Ezekiel 38 and 39. Mm -hmm. uh, the Muslims believe that the Mahdi is going to show up between around 2019. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the list goes on. Uh, Tom Horn has discovered something very interesting regarding what the, um, the secret societies believe, that the man of sin will show up between 2012 and 2016. Right. I mean, there's so many convergence points that I, I just think it's, it's really <laughs> incredible. It is incredible. Not only that, but Russia, which plays a prominent place in, in uh, Bible prophecy, is back again. Yes. And for a number of years, Russia sort of withdrew. Back in the 80s, the Russians were uh, playing it hot and heavy in Egypt and, uh, and in Syria and in Lebanon, the seaports of the Mediterranean. And, and then they sort of withdrew. They had their own problems. But now they're back in the Middle East, and, and this is yet another factor because Russia's mentioned in prophecy. Absolutely. So just, you know, looking at all these things together, if it was just one thing, we'd say, well, maybe it's nothing special. But we see so many things prophetically, big, big, big things that take perhaps uh, years and or decades or even centuries to, to really germinate. Now they're all happening or right on the verge of happening at, in the same window of time. If you like conversation of this type, you need to see Doug's presentation, which has lots of charts and graphs. You can see the eclipses laid out we were talking about. You can see uh, the timelines. He's got it all on this DVD, The Fall Feasts and The Budding of the Fig Tree. He presents a very interesting synopsis of the fig tree as Israel and uh, as, as, in, uh, as it's laid out prophetically by the Lord himself. Uh, this DVD is 1995 plus shipping and handling. Call the 800 number on your screen. Along with this, you get a free bonus. And uh, we talked about this on our last update. Uh, this is Bible software, uh, and not just Bible uh, software for your computer. This is a really good type of Bible search software. This has got things in it. You won't believe it's got it's got uh, dictionaries. It's got reference texts. It has uh, the Hebrew and Greek. It has cross referencing. You can put uh, two texts up beside each other on the screen as you search the scriptures. It's called the Word. And tell us a little bit about how uh, you came to be be offering this, Doug. Well, I discovered the Word software uh, a number of years ago. I actually uh, sort of bumped into the creator of the software online. And I just saw that what he was creating was uh, going to be a wonderful product. And uh, now about 13, maybe 14,000 hours later mm. of effort on his part, uh, he's created just a wonderful piece of software. He's giving it away free. Uh, the free doesn't mean that it's bad quality. It just means that he has a, a real burden to get a good study tool out to the world, and he thinks it should be free. Well, I saw this for the first time just yesterday. And I must tell you that on my computers, I have uh, a Bible reference software that is considered to be top of the line, and it's very expensive, and I use it all the time, seven days a week, believe me. And when I saw this, <laughs> I said, I've got to have this. This is incredible. The, the, present, the screen presentation is wonderful. Yeah, it really is. And, uh, you know, you're, you're getting a real powerful tool that will help people study the the Word of God. Even if you're a novice, you don't yeah. have to do all the fancy things. It's good for just looking up verses as well. It, it certainly is. So you can go from basic to advanced. Uh, it's called The Word. It's yours absolutely free if you order The Fall Feasts and the Budding of the Fig Tree, this DVD uh, by Doug Hamp for nineteen ninety five plus shipping and handling. You've, you've got the number on the screen right in front of you. And so avail yourself of this opportunity. And I'm sure that you're going to love uh, his presentation, uh, Israel as the Fig Tree in Prophecy. It'll clear a lot of things up that you may have been wondering about. Doug, uh, thanks for visiting us. It's always great, always stimulating. This guy is uh, fun to talk with. He's just loaded with ideas, <laughs> and he'll change your thinking about the way you look at the Bible, which is not a bad thing. Because Bible study is not static. You've got to grow in Christ, you right? You sure do. And the Lord keeps revealing things to us. It's very exciting. Thanks for coming by. Thank you so much. 
Lord bless you all, and remember the time is short, so keep looking out. (laughs) 